What's up, people? Will Clark here. Hope you're all doing pretty good. So this next episode of the podcast is with uh, Verity Foss and Charlie Watson. Uh, Verity and Charlie opened up a diner in Bristol in the UK called Uwe Diner. They also opened up a vegan diner called Uwe Vegan. They're both amazing people. I've known Verity for a very long time um, from when I used to run parties back in Bristol. And I've... I think I've not, I don't think I've met Charlie in person, um, but we've definitely seen each other around Bristol town. Um, so yeah, without further ado, Verity and Charlie. Charlie Watson, Verity Foss, how's it going? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very good, how, how are, you? are you? Pretty good. We were just talking about um, pizza chains from Michigan or from Detroit. So we have Jets Pizza. Have you, do we have that in the UK? Jazz Pizza. Jets. Jets pizza. No, we don't no, have that. No, we don't have Jets pizza. We have Domino's though, right? Domino's is like the one. Yeah. Domino's is from Detroit yeah. area. Um, I don't think any of the others, but Jets is like the square pizza company. You know. Ooh, they uh, need to come to the UK. Yeah, they're yeah, they're Instagramming it. So good. Yeah, I like that. It's the crust on the side of it. Yeah. It's how they burn it on the side. It's extra crispy. Have yeah, you, I think you, they put like... If you had a yeah. Chicago deep dish... Yeah, uh, well, not proper, but I, I basically make the doughs at home and then um, just try and recreate them. Okay, you should uh, but, check um, check out Lu Luminati's. Um, Luminati. Luminati's pizza. I'm gonna get rinsed for this because it's like the most touristy trap ever, but it's so so good. <laughs> um, I'm texting you the link now. Um, but it's so good. Uh, it's like the best deep dish I've had in my life. You have to kind of like, like Chicago because Chicago, Chicago have also got the um, the cracker dough, which is really good. Just like really, apparently they actually eat that one more in Chicago. It's like the um, it's like super thin, like and it's like half I think um, cornmeal and half flour in the dough. Really, and I've never like heard really of that thin. cracker dough yeah, pizza. That's... Oh yeah, that's so, it's like cracker dough, Chicago cracker dough. It's like um. So it's like a really thin base, and then and then they cut it in like little squares instead of uh, instead of um, triangles, and then um, ah, I've never seen that. It looks apparently, good that's, that's apparently it's banging. It's like really crispy, like really crispy base, it's like cracker. Have you been to New York yet, you guys? No, I have. I've been years ago, but I didn't take full advantage of the eating oh. opportunities. If you ever go, let me. Yeah, know. So it's definitely on the list. We're going to go within the next. Well, when this is all over, I think. We were talking about going. Yeah, get some yeah, cheap really flights. Okay. Yeah, it's the best place. Best place. So anyway, Verity, I haven't. Last time I saw you was it motion, uh, probably about ten <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Charlie, I don't think I've ever met you in person. Yeah, yeah. I think we've like my best, so. my best, the one who saved me, the one the that one kept you sane and made you stop. The doing... one who saved me from the se the sesh life. <laughs> <laughs> These days are over, my friend. I'm a professional businesswoman now. Clearly, you are. You both are killing it with the the whole diners. Can we uh, know a little bit more about these? Started actually next door. The takeaway joined onto this house that we're sat in now. In uh, Cakeson Street. Um, and basically, we were doing a pudding business, but it wasn't really making any money. Mm -hmm. And we thought, oh, Charlie had this head saying, "Well, let's open a burger restaurant." I was like, "What the hell do we know about?" Yeah, burgers? we were doing a pudding thing, but I didn't even—I didn't even really like pudding that much, mm -hmm. and um, doesn't really inspire me that much. I mean, I'll eat a pudding, but I'm not—you know—we were yeah. making stuff that it was all right, but it was just a bit boring. And then, but we love burgers and uh, like that kind of like dirty food. Yeah, and um, so we were like, "Oh, actually, let's just let's just open a burger place," and then. Um, and then we, we, there was a spot next door to our house, which was the Pigs and Takeaway. And then we spoke to him and, and was like, look, can we, um, can, do you know anywhere where we can get like a, because we thought we want to do like one of the, like a takeaway, you know, like the kind of fast foody takeaway style thing, yeah. as opposed to like the whole restaurant um, vibe. Like we'd never really been up for doing like restaurants as such, but more like always wanted to have like a, a fast food, like a Shake Shack in and out, yeah. like I don't know, Popeyes, that kind of style thing, as opposed to like a, like a restaurant because everyone does the whole restaurant sit down cocktails you know what I mean it's easy isn't Whereas, it? it's um, kind of it's, everyone's um, doing that especially in the UK at the moment like well I wouldn't say at the moment for the last five years everyone's doing like Americanized food but it's not actually 
gritty, dirty fast food. It's it's kind of yeah, like, that's it. Classic. Like we, we yeah, so we we always from day one, so we always wanted to have the um like that that fast food vibe, but like but with amazing quality, like this like the same if not better ingredients that you would have in the restaurants. You know yeah. what I mean? So um so yeah, so we so we started out trying to find these these takeaway spots and um and then yeah, so basically the guy we first spoke to just said, look, I don't want to do this anymore because yeah, I think he had about four of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, no, I don't want to do this one. You can have this site. So we were like, oh, well, perfect. Small, <laughs> not expensive, right next to our house. So yeah, six weeks later, we were in and that was it. And um, we, we did burgers and dirty fries and stuff. And, um, that, and then, that was in, was that in, was that, where was that in Bristol? Picton Street. Picton Montpellier, Street. so just off Stokes Craft. Okay, cool. And then about six months later, we... I don't know, as soon as we kind of stopped cooking there, we decided we want to open yeah, another about, one. Yeah, it was about six months later we looked because it was so busy from day one. And there was something that the guy who owned Five Guys always said, is like, you know, when you're starting a, a restaurant or a, a site, you want to find a small, um, somewhere off the beaten track. You don't want to go straight in with the big uh, city centre or whatever site. You want to go off the beaten track. Yeah. Because if you can make people travel to a, to a small neighbourhood place, because your food's that good and you can make it busy there, then you know you can make it anywhere. Yeah, and that's definitely. kind of um, stuck with us. I mean, you know, we were really busy and Picton Street is is really quiet. Yeah, It's, it's five states, it's got five, six centres, but it's really quiet kind of neighbourhood. And it was just so, so busy, um, much to the dismay of the local residents. Um, I think. Really? Um, were they not happy with but, that? Yeah, so then we thought, right, it's time. To, it's, well, no, everyone loved it to start with, but then, then as we got busier and busier, you know, you've got, so a stage bass. where you got like people blaring out drum and bass, uh, the stuff, and then people sitting in their cars, playing music, eating out in the street, and then there'd always be like fifteen delivery riders like waiting to pick up their orders. <laughs> it was manic. Um, we well, just what well, once was a really quiet street to turn <laughs> into Uwe Street, and then yeah, yeah. it was just like. F-U. Yeah, it was literally just like <laughs> rubbish everywhere. Like everyone hanging around, literally everyone hanging in their cars, eating their food. It became a youth club every night of week. <laughs> yeah. So we moved on. Um, um, and then we opened North Street and then basically just give you a to wrap it up. When we were at North Street, we were on holiday and we heard that this takeaway had come up and we'd wanted it for years and we were like, oh, should we just have it and make it into a vegan, ooey vegan really randomly? And we were like, okay, so then we just signed for this other property and then, you know, Three months later, we opened Dewey Vegan, which was the biggest hit out of all of them. And which then, is crazy, um, right? Because vegan's obviously like very fashionable right now, but I wouldn't, yeah. I could, I didn't imagine that that would be the the biggest one. Is it just, it, yeah. why, like, why? Is there, is there, an... veganism bloody huge. Yeah, it's it crazy. Is like now it's big. And it was now. kind of big when we, obviously, it was big when we, still when we, like, when we first started it, but we, we'd done a burger, like a vegan burger, and it did really well. Yeah. And like where we originally started in Montpellier, like in Pixton Street, it's quite like a veggie vegan kind of area anyway. Yeah, yeah. So we've always had some vegan stuff. Like we were doing that um that that fried buffalo fried cauliflower, which like everyone does now. But we did that ages ago and like everyone absolutely loved it. And uh kind of grew from there. And we did a, a burger when we opened our new site, like a vegan burger, but it was just a real fast to make. Uh, cause we had to like make the seitan and like make the dough and like it just took ages and it wasn't actually profitable because of the amount of time it took yeah, to make yeah. it. Yeah. But it was really good. And then we were like, oh, you know what? Let's just let's just open a vegan only site. Did it, and yeah, and it's, and it's it been is. really popular. Uh, it smashed it. So we then opened. We, this is actually where the story goes sad. So we then confirmed a site in Dalton, which we'd waited ages for, and we just started building it. Like all of our livelihoods gone into this one in Dalton because we've been waiting years to open one in London, mm-hmm. and London is the like where we want to grow and like have yeah, our main yeah, part yeah. of our business. We just love London. Yeah, and essentially what happened was we obviously been going through the build at the moment but like the mid build the mid pandemic started yeah. Yeah. now we've just got this really we put, yeah we put, doing nothing. it's like a big we put everything we pretty much saved up all of our savings like right let's plow it into this big kind of site in london which is going to be really cool and then uh yeah literally in the middle of the, the middle hands. of the build it's just it's, we paid all the money and then now it's uh it's, it's actually still being built at the moment luckily yeah. the build is still there it's but, um, a logistical nightmare. It's going to be ready in two weeks, but yeah, so that's that's where we're at. It's all good, though. It um, kind of adds to the story, right? Yeah. If you can survive through yeah. this time, yeah. then like you got, like literally everybody I know from Bristol have like goes to Uwe. And it's <laughs> like, it's kind of amazing because there's not really many other things like 
food wise that have kind of gotten on to everyone like there's some really good food yeah. in Bristol some really good food yeah but for sure yeah like Uwe like everyone talks about Uwe everyone goes to Uwe and it's f- kind of fucking amazing that you guys have I've actually uh, never, I've, never, I've actually never really been do. which is really annoying the la- what? I went the day to- he tried to come there was a flood yeah I, I came and it was like the one time that I was back and I was coming with Eli Brown and we both well, no, I think I think it. didn't you have like an issue with the like with the like burners or something like that? The like fryers. I think the fuse box. I think the no. I think the fuse box blew up. I think that was the morning we that we were getting the new. Yeah, we have issues all the time. There's always a new one. Yeah, but um, but, but no, I, I think, think it's the name that makes people. I, you know, you know what it is? Food, I think it is the big portions and the name doing. But it's also <laughs> the fact that it is a fast food joint. It's not like yeah. a. You know, like people love McDonald's. Like everyone goes to McDonald's all the time. Or like in in America, everyone loves In and Out Burger, don't yeah. they? And like or Shake Shack, and like. But the, the people that actually, I think, kill it in these games are like the fast food ones because because you can go and spend a fiver or you can spend twenty five quid if yeah. you want. Do you know, and that's the point. Where a lot of these restaurants have got to the stages where you know, like Byron, for example, grew really quickly during this burger boom. But you're probably spending thirty five, nearly forty quid if you're having a drink. Maybe like a milkshake, a pudding. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you're having all same these with, different bits. Like same with GBK. Like I, yeah. I, I, I used to love that, and then it it used to be yeah. really good when it first opened, and then it obviously turned into more of a chain, and then it got terrible. And yeah, I remember when it first opened. It, it was, was go to thing. It was so good, and I guess Mom, that's, can I have my birthday party at GBK. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think they have GBK. I don't think they have Byron in America actually. Um, but they're these, shutting. Um, they're shutting a lot of them. Oh, what, GBKs yeah. or Byron's? Yeah, loads of them are shutting. They, I think they shut to like, I don't know, 20, 30 stores or something this year. Well, I guess... They grew, they, all these people grew too quickly. And then they like, they grew too quickly. And then that like culture of like, you know, people got bored. Of, like GBK is expensive. Like I remember I went like not too long ago and you pay like, I think you spend about 25 quid and you get like a really small burger and you get like barely any fries. It's just like really, really small. And it's really expensive. Then you buy a pint and it was like six quid. And like, yeah. I don't know, the whole thing, you're eating pretty much eating fast food, but you're paying loads of money and having to wait around for quite a while to get the yeah. food as well. But it's not Whereas even, like, it's not even good quality fast food. That's the thing. It's like, there's, there's difference between fast food and good quality fast food. And I think that's the, it, the thing in the States that I've kind of come across is you have McDonald's, KFC, you have like what, what we have here. And then you have in yeah. and out and Shake Shack. And the difference between In and Out and Shake Shack compared to McDonald's and everything like it's just better quality and it's cooked kind of freshly. Yeah, so it's all good oh, quality. Yeah, but like, absolutely. Shake Shack is the one. It's but so I prefer good. the vibe of that. Like, if I'm going for burgers so and that, I way prefer to roll into like the, you know, more chilled. You order what you want. You sit with your mates. It's casual. You, you know, you can wear what you want. You kind of five guys also. I mean, it's, it's just really casual. You can kind of piss around a bit. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't really want to go to a formal restaurant and eat, eat that kind of food as such. And then no, have totally someone like checking up on you. Like, can I go do anything else? Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like cheese all over your face. Like, do you know what I mean? And like, also you want to order and collect it yourself. And also, or like order and do takeaway, order on takeaway, uh, on, on delivery. But the whole beautiful thing about Uwe is you don't want the person behind you to know how much you're ordering. So you can just order <laughs> a big takeaway, pig out, and no one has to know. You're so in and out. It's not like you're making a song and dance yeah. about it. You just stuff. Hey, and roll I, out the rest I think that's something that really annoyed me about GBK is that you'd have to go to the counter to like order and then you'd go I, yeah. it's the kind of the same with Nando's and it's not something that yeah. I'm like if I'm going to a restaurant I want the restaurant experience I don't want to like have to do the half fast food half restaurant and then be treated like yeah. shit like if I'm paying 30 quid for Pop like whack. chicken and chicken breast and chips I want like good service yeah. um, you get a you don't get charged service for Nando's, do yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But you're not getting any service. Exactly. Weird. Those places are weird. But like, we would never charge service. It would be an outrage if we put service on. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Twelve point seven five percent. In in the in the US, like it's like such a tip culture. So even if you're, you tip everywhere you go. Twenty percent. Really. Like minimum twenty percent. You America last week. Yeah, I didn't. I was explaining um, it to Verity. Like Verity went to. Um, Disneyland in Florida about what a month ago. Yeah, 
And I was like, oh, so you, like, I don't think you realised about the tipping thing. Like, I was like, really pissed. Barry wasn't tipping anyone, so they must have been like absolutely hating <laughs> they it. They like, hated <laughs> you. They proper hated yeah, you. Yeah, but I didn't think you realised. Yeah, but it. I was eating at like Taco Bell, fucking... Oh, sorry. sorry. You can swear, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating at Taco Bell, effing... Um, what's the one, like the Mexican one that everyone goes to? Uh, Chipotle. 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 Like, you don't you... tip there, man. Come on. No, this is true. I don't know. I think people still do. I think this is just I us mean, being British get... and being stingy you fuckers. Tip, um... I'll put on an American accent next time I go there, then so I'll get away with <laughs> the you tipping. In, um, where was it? Hard Rock? You went, you yeah, like I tipped in Hard Rock, actually. The service in America is really good. That's, That's why you tip. Uh, yeah, it is good. It's really good. They look after you 100%. So where did uh where did the whole name Uwe come from? I'm sure you've said this about a million times. Oh God, it's such a cringe. Um, well, basically, it all happened in this room <laughs> when we were thinking of naming the pudding business, and Charlie's friend Jack was sat here, and then we've just been seeing storms. Yeah, I think uh, we were. Like, it was like, it was like, we, we um. You wanted to call like dad's dessert. Oh, shut like, up! Like, no, I didn't. And then it's like, getting really lame like that, and then. And then we were like, he's lying. You know, like Snoop Dogg's always like, ooh wee. And then he's like, ooh wee, put it in the air. And we were like, oh, we call it ooh wee pudding in the air. And then, like, <laughs> and then it kind of like, turned to ooh wee pudding. And then, and then it turned to, and then we were like, oh, let's call it ooh wee pudding. So it's like, ooh wee, it's something pretty nice. You're like, ooh wee. Ooh wee. And uh, so then, so that's so that, so that. And then, um, and then it just, and it just transformed into ooh wee pudding to ooh wee diner. And then we just kind of stuck with it. But the name is Uwe, like, everyone's like, is it Uwe? Is it Owie? <laughs> yeah. No one knows. It's definitely Uwe. I think if you can get that wrong. Yeah, it's definitely Uwe. Jesus. And people would, like, ring us up and be like, oh, are you going to Owie? Is it, is it called Owie Dino or Uwe? But I was like, well, why would it be called Owie? I don't really get that one, but... Um... <laughs> I've got my tortoise sat here when we're having this little <laughs> podcast. What was your tortoise called? <laughs> I adopted it three days ago to keep me occupied during isolation. It's called Shelly. It, Very generic name <laughs> for Nicely Thorsoy. done. Nicely done. Is it keeping you occupied? She's cute, isn't she? she she's been feral for a whole year and a half, Where? roaming the back garden. Because she got lost. Her sister had it. My sister Christmas. had it, lost it in the garden a year and a half ago, never saw it again, <laughs> and it reappeared. <laughs> so I was like, you are not keeping it anymore. It's now mine, because you clearly can't have the responsibility of looking after a Thorsoy. <laughs> Who uh who who owned it? Your sister owned it beforehand. She got it as a Christmas present a couple of years ago. And she never wanted it, so oh, um. Okay. So she just let it go. Actually, got lost in the garden. She was pretty annoyed when it came back. How did it last a year in the garden? It's, it's a warrior, mate. Like, it's grown, like, it's grown double the size. <laughs> Love strawberries. <laughs> it's got strawberry all around its mouth. <laughs> Honestly, best pet though. Couldn't recommend them more if I tried. They're just so easy to look after. You can leave them for a year and a half and they'll still be alive. <laughs> I'd never do that, FYI. I'm a responsible pet Clearly. owner. Clearly. So, <laughs> so uh, did any of you do like cul- culinary school or anything like that? No. No. We just... Um... You're just the nobody. Really, well, if well, eating comes as McDonald's and Five Guys as culinary school, then yeah. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we did it with our mouths. Like, we just, basically, we kind of knew what we wanted it to taste like. We knew what tasted good. We knew what, to be honest with you, a lot of these places, you go to, like, when we go to McDonald's, we get, like, you know, the, the, cheese, the plain cheeseburger and add, like, extra cheese and stuff. And it's like, a lot of the places we went to, like, like I don't know, just they put, like, one piece of American cheese on it and, like, um, and the button, like, on the burgers and, then if you wanted more, it'd be like one pound or one pound fifty to add like another single yeah, slice yeah, of cheese. Yeah. And it's like everything's just a bit stingy and like just a bit of a bit of a, a, a rinse. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. like we were like, oh well, we'll get amazing meat. Like we used to love the ox, you know, the steakhouse, the yeah, ox yeah. in Bristol. Yeah. So Is we it still used to open? With that. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously not now, but yeah, it will be yeah. open when, when Corona's done. So yeah, so we used to love that place, and then uh, we have steaks from there. So we were like, right. We'll get our beef from their butchers because obviously they were Buxton butchers, they're called. Yeah. Because that's the steak we enjoy. Uh, got the best beef from there. And then just kind of learned how to cook the, the burger properly um, and just ate shitloads of them, basically. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we put loads of cheese on it, uh, American cheese, which is what we liked. And then kind of like, you know, like bacon, we'd always have the, I always love like thin, crispy, almost like pancetta yeah, yeah, on the burger, yeah. like really thin. Like it has to have like a snap to it, you know what I mean? Not, 
I always hated this like soggy undercooked bacon that people seem to. You have to have crispy. You have time. to have crispy bacon on burgers. You have to. But no one was love. doing it. Like, ev- everywhere we went was like you know everyone loves crispy bacon. No one likes soggy bacon. But everywhere we went, it would always be like soggy bacon in your yeah. burger or like I don't know. Like so we were like right. These are all the things that we identified that we think are, are the best and what it needs to be, and we just did it. Put like loads of burgers, but like loads of bacon, um, cheese. Sorry, crispy bacon, really good beef really good rolls and then you know what I mean and then it just kind of rolled it from there where do you and, get the um, rolls made do you guys make yeah. them or do you get so we don't we didn't know sorry where do you get the rolls made do you do you make the rolls yourselves or do you get the uh, the, the buns do you do you get the, those made the rolls yeah we used to make, oh, mate, we had the grand idea of making rolls by our hand not even having a dough machine when we first opened <laughs> I'd probably make about 20 bags in a day all of them would be too we never even made a bread roll for right? about a week before so you'd end up opening the shift on 30 bread rolls and you'd sell out of in the first three orders and then you're like sorry we're closed you've got no buns left it was an absolute <laughs> calamity can you make me a score it was an absolute calamity but that's the thing about um, Learning, me and Charlie is it's quite versatile so the way we learn is to mess up and then learn from it and not do it again because really there's no bible on how to run a restaurant how to run a business it's just about how it works for you and the way it works for me is by effing up learning from it never doing that thing again it's this life life lessons right there isn't it yeah because honestly when you're in a restaurant you will come across so many hurdles every single day there's so many people telling you this is what you should do or this is what you should do but the only way to do it is to do it the way you think feels right and then if it's wrong don't do it again I totally agree. It's it's like everything in life. But, it's like it's like when you got that annoying yeah. girlfriend or that annoying boyfriend that none of your friends like it, but you're absolutely besotted with until you actually realise that they're absolutely a shit shit bag and you get rid of them. And then you're like, oh, I should have listened to all my mates. But <laughs> until until you yeah, realise yourself. To my <laughs> so so do you get a, do you get a bakery to to make the the rolls as well? Well, no, the funny story actually was, um, so when we first started, we, we'd get all our, do you know Booker's, like the whole yeah, trailer? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'd go to Booker's and get every all day. the stuff. Every day. Every day in the morning. And then, um, and then, and then we, cause we were baking these rolls ourselves every day and it was, it was getting to the stage where like, you know, every day, cause we weren't really experienced doing it. Um, <laughs> we would be like, oh, are they going to work? And it'd be like six o'clock. It'd be like, shit, they're not ready yet. And like literally waiting for them to be ready in the oven in my house. Um, with this, so <laughs> It was a bit of a night, so we were like, "All right, we're going to start just buying a few backup rolls in case they don't work or in case we run out." Yeah. So we just started buying these like these brioche rolls this from. Um, the bookers, but they were really good. They, they were actually. They were literally like the McDonald's bun, but like sweet with this perfect glaze. They're really bad for you, like really. Chemi- they were shit. There was a shiny food. They were really bad. They, they, they were really shit roll, basically. <laughs> but like they, they tasted just, they just turned out to be banging, and like so everyone was like. Everyone was saying about how, how like, good the rolls everyone's were. like, oh, Uwe is so good. Like, you know, they make their own rolls. They're like the best rolls. And all these chefs were coming. And we ended up just sacking off the ones we made and using these ones from Booker's because it was easier. <laughs> and then so, so, so everyone, all these chefy people and everyone was having these like really shit quality chemical rolls, but they were just amazing. <laughs> And been like, oh god, the rolls, yeah, so good. And like, because that's what I heard really when you when you guys first opened. That's what I heard that like your rolls were amazing, and that it was you guys like making them from fresh. Mate, it was a complete fluke. You know when you see those like Buzzfeed like twenty items that existed that taste really good, but you never think it. Like yeah. it would be like yeah. number one on the Buzzfeed. No like, way. It's like perfect. You know, it's because they were really sweet. They were really light. Really, they kind of came frozen as well, and you carve, you kind of thawed them out and then cooked them on the grill, but. They're like really sweet, really light. And then because we had the, like loads of cheese and uh, really good tasting meat, it really enabled, you just tasted the cheese. The Sorry. Yeah. You, is the video on the thing or not? No, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, um, we, so yeah basically, you just enabled you to, it was we just the were really, the meat and the cheese, wasn't it? But we it was were amazing. super set on using these rolls for the rest of Uri's career. And then this guy came to us one day and he was like, look, I know you like a Hadouken. Hadouken. Hakaide. Hakaide. A <laughs> Duke and milk roll. A Kaido yeah, milk run. I've made it a perfect one. And we were like, nah, mate, not interested. We know what we like. Yeah, we've got loads who were like giving us rolls. we like, try this one, try this so, one. And then anyway, we tried his roll and it was the one. And we've used him ever since. We only used those first buns probably for about eight weeks of Uwe being open. And then we moved over to this guy. And then everyone was like, F me, those rolls are like the best thing I've ever tasted. Yeah, yeah, they, they were amazing. They were like milk it, buns, milk Japanese buns. milk roll it was. So it's like really, like, it was like a really buttery, 
um, milky kind of dough that was really soft and um, quite sweet actually as well. I had loads of like egg, butter, milk in it. And um, and yeah, and then and they were just really, really. So then we moved over to non chemical. There was a period. There was a period. Everyone loves them. We were like testing with our mates, and like, look, we've got these really good rolls that this guy's hit us up with. But like, we'd just be going against, you know, what everyone loves already. Like, <laughs> yeah. did you change it? And everyone's like, oh, I don't know, it's so different. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and it was a big decision, and we were like, actually, we we can't keep using a bus's twelve p roll or whatever. Because it was, the yeah. thing is, at the end of the day, if you do want to be this premium fast food brand I think it's can you get in the camera I think it's really important that the <laughs> bun is actually um, the bun does actually have to be really important you can't be using a, yeah. a book as bought rather. and it looks a bit crap in photos as well um, well so your Instagram so is new one. Your, your Instagram is amazing um, how what's what is your your Instagram for people to to follow you well, we've got we have, we have, we have Uwe, Uwe underscore diner, O O W E E underscore diner, and then you've got a different one for Uwe vegan, so it's Uwe um, underscore vegan, and then they're both pretty similar. Um, it's amazing, yeah, it, it makes you hungry 100%. Do you do, <laughs> do you guys do like Mate. a fried chicken sandwich? Oh, what, sorry? What? Do you do like a fried chicken sandwich? Oh, we lost. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I got up to the fried. Ch- yeah, yeah. Do you, do, we got to the fried. Ch- do, you, do you do a fried chicken sandwich? Yeah. Not a sandwich. A, a well, burger they call it a sandwich. Yeah, it's a big debate. Is a fried chicken burger a burger or a sandwich? Uh, you call it a sandwich, do you? <laughs> yeah, it's just that's just I'm just super Americanized when it comes to fast food, and I guess that's what they call it. But- <laughs> no, I'm part of this. I'm part of this group on Facebook called the Burger Group, and it's like all these burger nerds um, who like argue and talk about burgers. And then sometimes people like people make burgers and upload them. And then sometimes someone will upload like a chicken burger, and like God help them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like not a bloody burger, it's a sandwich. Do you, <laughs> get rid of like, Whoa. So I'm aware of the Have you ever watched burger? Have you ever watched the Burger Show on uh, Munchies? Is it Munchies on YouTube? The Burger Show, yeah. So the Burger Show is, I think it is, yeah. No, it's not. It's First We Feast. It's First We Feast. Yeah, you're right. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So that that burger group is their group. It's oh, Facebook okay. called The Burger Group. And it's just that Alvin, whatever he's called, Alvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the big guy. Yeah. So that's their group. And then it's like loads, of, it's quite good, actually. You should join it. It's basically loads of people talking about burgers and like making, or like where the best burgers are. If someone has an amazing burger, they post it. Really good inspiration. It always pops in my feed. I'm like, yeah, I need a burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a burger. How, how many burgers mm-hmm. on a on a weekly basis are you eating then? Bro, I I stopped eating you <laughs> a long time ago. Mate, for six months. Six months when we when we launched it, we were I was probably doing one a day. Like <laughs> because yeah. no, because what it was is like we we're obviously obsessed with it, but then I'd be on the grill every day, you'd be on the fryers. And like you'd be like, I'm not gonna have a burger today. I can't do it today. I've had a four. You know, you know you always you, end up having one. When you know it's time to stop is when you've eaten so many burgers that so you try and make it healthier by having the cheese and the beef, but with the lettuce and no bun, <laughs> but still having like four pieces of cheese, a fried burger, bacon on top. And then when you're doing that for what a while, that? Not, and you're still not like losing any weight, you're like, right now is time to cut me out of my life. <laughs> No, we um we still we still do eat it sometimes, but um, but yeah, we we stopped it. But I mean, we did we because as well, we would like we'd go to London on like burger pilgrimages and like just eat. We eat like <laughs> eight burgers in a day, like just trying all the different competition all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did that for a while, and it just it did get to the stage where like everywhere we went, we just end up eating burgers in burger restaurants and. It does get a bit boring after a while. <laughs> I get that. So, what's your on on Uwe Diner? What's yeah. the like? The start, do you know what though? It's, it's the fast food what ones the whole time. What huh? you say, well? On on no, carry on. What were you saying, Charlie? I'm saying the ones that actually hold up, the ones that you can find yourself continuing to go to, are the fast food ones. Though, like we still regularly get a Mackey's or like, um, or so- like a Shake Shack. We get a Shake. Oh, yeah, this surprises I me. I love McDonald's. This surprises me. Yeah, we get McDonald's and Shake Shack are the two that that we probably get the most. The thing is, Will, 
everyone always has this misconception that people who own restaurants and stuff only eat really, really good food. But in reality, they all smash in McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I hate McDonald's. I would like, <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather be seen dead than in a McDonald's. I cannot stand it. I don't know really? how people like it. It just you're doesn't. Such, you're such a trend. It's such a trend follower. It's so popular to hate McDonald's. I'm <laughs> no, so you know I'll never is? have in America. Do you know what it is? In America, you've got all the um, you've got so many better options. Yeah, we do. Do you know what I mean? I think whereas in the UK, it's like you know a lot of these, you know, like you know, you usually want to have a burger on a Sunday when I'm hungover or something. And then we're actually living in London now, so um, so you know we've got like a Shake Shack which delivers to our house. They so get that a lot. Or, um, or generally, if I'm getting a burger, I'll get a Shake Shack. Shake Shack yeah, is we so love, good. We love the Shake Shack mushroom bun. The mushroom oh. bun is actually, if, I think, better than the, the meat one, actually. They do this, like, mushroom burger. Have you had it? Yeah, I've had that. I've also had the... Have you had the chicken sandwich that they do? It's not very uh, good. I had it, and I couldn't eat it. It was so dry. Yeah. Well, you're not into it. So dry. I, I've only had it once, and it's it really was dry. amazing. It was really, really good, but... I, I think know. the American Shake Shack's a little bit different to the UK Shake Shack. It's the roll. It's the Martin's potato roll. It's like, is it that squidgy? Like? In, um, I stopped in Detroit Airport on my way to Florida and I had a um, a chicken sandwich from there <laughs> and it was buttermilk fried crispy chicken. Yeah, it, from McDonald's. And it was one of the best chicken burgers I've ever had in my life. Like, I mean, the customer service in the place was atrocious, but the food was the best McDonald's I've ever had. It's, it's, yeah, it was like an actual, it was like a gourmet chicken burger, wasn't it? They literally, it was like the best hot dogs I've ever had in my life. But like also, I was like, stood there for like probably 45 minutes waiting to be served and they were just looking at me and I was just <laughs> looking at them and I was like, this is sandal. <laughs> like, I really mean. And, and then I was like, here's my money. And they just snatched it from me. I was like, okay, thank you. Are so you impressed with that one? I think in America, they've got this whole fast food thing a lot, a lot more locked down than that. Well, yeah, you, yeah. Like, what's, in, what's a, in, in LA, you're you're literally like go to an in out in and out, and people are like waiting around the like around the corner in their cars for the takeout. Like you, people line up like f- all day, like two three hours for, <laughs> for in and outs, and it's like, come on, this is not fast food now. Shut this is like, up. yeah, it's ridiculous. People wait three hours. Yeah, when Shake yeah. When, when, um... when Shake Shack first started in New York. Like I would go, they, they first, op- they opened one up on 7th Ave and I would go and you'd have to like time it correctly because if you went at lunchtime, there'd be like an hour, an hour and a half wait just to get in. And then you're like waiting 30 <laughs> minutes. To cook That's what food. creates the hype with you. 100%. Bro, that, needs to happen, that, that used to happen to me. We're a pick and speech. If you wait an hour and a half, two hours for the food. But, it's great. Um, it's it's not good technically, but it is. It's great for hype great for and things like that. Yeah. It's obviously not great for business because you want to turn around and get everyone in and out as quickly as you possibly can and make some money. But it, it's fucking great. But isn't that um Chick Fil A meant to one? So Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Yeah, I've never actually had it. People rave about it. Um, but I don't know. But you wouldn't. I I know I would. I I really I need to have one, but I haven't. Um. But it's supposed to be really good. There's a there's yeah, Gun- I've heard that. there's a place in Detroit which there's a few places in America called Gus's Fried Chicken, which is like the classic yeah. fried chicken spot. Um, but again, like you said, there's so many like little fast food joints that aren't eat- like there's a diner in Detroit called Owl, which is a 24 hour diner and it makes just like insane. I guess it's like Mexican. I don't know. I could be wrong. It's kind of like Mexican infused fast food, but it's so good. And it's 24 hours a day, but like you don't really get that over here. Could you, that's the thing, but you know, it's in, that's what we're saying. That's what our thoughts were. It's like everybody in, in America, it's all these big fast food brands that like, you know, you can have, have all this food. Whereas in America, in England, everyone loves doing these like really like, I don't know, like the, the more like dinery, not diner, but like the sit in, like, the sit-in restaurant experience, yeah. but no one does the the big, the fast food style stuff as much, you know? No, can you do like, it, I don't know how the laws work, but can you do like 24-hour things here? Depends on the license of your yeah. restaurant. The thing is, in, 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 in the UK, though, there's no one really busy enough that will have a demand for yeah. um, 24 hours. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, in London, yeah, yeah. some of the McDonald's are, but I mean, no one's really that busy enough to, to do that. 
Like, yeah, we, it's not really like yeah. a all night long yeah, yeah. culture, is it? But no. I, I guess if you had like one place that was 24 hours, like over the weekend, like Friday to Sunday, yeah. you could like make it kind of a name for yourself where you're just going to get everyone. If you, is Dirty Burger still going on? Dirty Burger in London? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they start a few of their they sites, but they do, um, they're owned by Soho House. Oh, really? I didn't know that. See, yeah, when they yeah, first, yeah. when they first opened, they were really good, but I don't know if they're good anymore. I think they fell off a bit, actually. I don't know. I've, I, I think when they I've never actually had one. I think but. it's just more people came out. Like, and the thing is, in London, it's like, if you want a dirty burger in London, you have the pick of the crop. Yeah. Like, there is literally so many. But you know what, also, in a way, like, kind of, but the, the thing is, with growing a dirty burger food chain is, um, it's probably not the same for America, but in the UK, people are a bit bored of the whole, like, dirty beef burger thing. Now, a lot more people are becoming vegan and yeah. conscious about what they eat. So I don't mind having like the one dirty burger restaurant because you can put all your energy into making that amazing. Totally. But as far as growing a chain, we never had any intentions of growing the dirty burger one. We always wanted to grow the vegan one because the vegan one is, it, you know, it's less damage, has less damaging impact on the environment, but also more and more people are turning um, vegan and it's becoming really trendy to have yeah. like vegan fast food a lot more than it is to have a dirty burger. Well, we wanted, we wanted to be vegan to be like the, like all these brands have been talking about, but like there isn't like the vegan version of that yet. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. Like your vegan, like our, our inspiration is like the in and out, like that is the kind of the main inspiration we had. And it's like there isn't the vegan version of that yet. And we're trying to make it as good as, so like, you know, like 50% of our clients or customers, sorry, of um, Uri Vegan in Bristol aren't actually vegan. Yeah, it's just yeah. people who enjoy the, food. Enjoy the food. So that's yeah. what we're trying to do, make it so it's as good as these things, but, um, but it just so happens to be vegan. Do you know what I mean? It's a dope idea. So is the restaurant in Dalston going to be vegan? Yeah. Yeah, all vegan. Everything we open now is going to be 100% vegan. 100% vegan. We make promise. Yeah. Do you I think, mean, it's, it's a bit... Do you think you guys will turn but, vegan? Uh, Harley doesn't eat meat. I, well, I did... Um, I did... From January the 2nd, I did... Uh, until about a week and a half ago, I was strictly vegan, didn't break it, and then... Um, but then since we've been in quarantine, I've been like, oh, I've had to eat a bit of cheese. <laughs> so miserable. So I, I, we, neither of us eat like a head. Like, I don't so eat meat though. Basically, the whole point of being vegan isn't to be like, we're a really preachy vegan brand and you can only eat our food if yeah, you're yeah, vegan. Yeah, yeah. The idea of Iri Vegan is to reflect how I feel about me personally being, trying veganism. And it's, I'll try and eat vegan 80% of the time, but 20% of the time I will still, you know, have meat. fish or meat yeah. or dairy. And Iri Vegan's that thing where you can be like, well, I was going to go and get a dirty burger, but actually I'll go and get a dirty Iri Vegan because it's still a, it's just as tasty as the other thing. And yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to push this whole, everyone needs to be vegan. I'm just trying to say, if you do fancy not eating meat today and not substituting the flavor, come down and have an Iri Vegan. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the thing is, is though, with what you've done with Iri Dino is that <clears throat> the whole, for me, the whole vegan thing is, I'm not vegan and it, I respect whatever anyone wants to do with, with what they decide to eat. But for me, it's like, I'd want it. If I'm eating meat, I want to eat the best quality meat. I want to eat yeah. the best quality cheese. I want to eat the best quality kind of produce. If, and I kind of want to make sure that the animal has been treated well and everything like that okay. like from, from start to finish. And I think with what you guys are doing, if you're getting your, meat from a butcher's and things like that. I, I we use the process butcher. Yeah, the I, I, and I guess that's the thing is like you're kind of, from what you're doing with the Uwe to Uwe Diner and Uwe Vegan, you're kind of doing the right thing with, with Uwe Diner. You're not giving yeah. people shit apart from the old book of, book of buns, but you've changed <laughs> it. <laughs> that stopped a very long time ago, Will. But I, I guess... But no, it is true. I guess vegan's so fashionable now and... I think like even, and I think it's kind of weird because obviously Greg's do like their vegan. Greg's is for any American listening. Greg's is like a big, uh, pasty kind of sausage roll brand um, in in the UK. But they do like vegan stuff, and even like McDonald's and things like that do vegan. But with like McDonald's and with all the fast food joints doing vegan that's just kind of creating more income for them to sell more burgers. And it's not necessarily <laughs> the right good. It's not like the good 
food, if you know what I mean. It's not healthy for you. It's not even the fact that it's healthy. It's, is it like locally sourced? Is it is it yeah. environmental friendly? And it's probably not. But yeah. I, but then also, what I see that I've, I've been involved in debates about this, and there's two stories. There's two sides of the story because there's that side saying, well. If you go and buy a vegan burger from McDonald's, you're still funding the meat industry. But then there's another side to the story, which I also think is really true. And it's if, say, one in five people who tries that vegan burger isn't a vegan, they're a meat eater, and they've made it taste really good, you're then converting people to eat less meat. Yeah. Because a lot of people who would go to, say, Burger King and McDonald's on a regular basis, including myself, would probably never think about trying vegan food. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's alien to them. You know, If you're eating McDonald's your whole life, and you've n- never even really tried anything vegan. That's it's so, it's so alien to you that if you go to KFC and try their amazing vegan chicken burger, you're like, oh, wow, well, so now oh, every meal crap. doesn't have to be meat. Do you have know you what tried I mean? the, um, they have it in America, the Impossible Burger. Have you had that? Yeah, I have. It kind of just tastes like... Oh, uh, bang in. What do you think? <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it. Because when I'm... I want it actually like... It just tastes like a cheap burger. That makes sense. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I think. Do you know what though? I, I think what might happen is so they're making this these plants taste like at the moment just like anything like beef. It's usually like crappy kind of yeah, yeah. cheap beef, like you said. But I think what will happen soon is they'll develop the flavour to make it taste like an aged, like an actual you know beef, beef like a yeah, high yeah. grade beef patty. Yeah. You know, my thought is what will happen is it will get to that level because I mean. I, Verity bought me one back. She went to Hard Rock and then was like, look, because you can't get them here. And I've heard yeah. they're like amazing. So Verity's like chatting to the guy at the Hard Rock, like, look, my boyfriend um, really wants, wants to try this burger. Um, is there any chance I could buy one of you? And he just came out and gave us gave her one, like a raw one. Yeah. And that sat in the hotel fridge for a week. He went away in three days after and then went in her suitcase and brought it back. And I ate it when she got back. And I thought it was pretty impressive. Like, I know what you mean. It tastes like a cheapish burger. Yeah. But as a burger, as beef goes, it tastes pretty realistic, right? Yeah, it and does. Like, it does. Yeah, definitely. I just, if they've got it that good, like I think they'll soon be able to get it so it tastes like a dry age, really high end beef burger, but it will cost a fraction of the price. Yeah. My, and it'll be a lot. My kind of questioning behind it is how unhealthy is it for you? Not that bad. Uh, well, I think, I think there's, far, I there's quite think... a lot of salt in these things and, uh, and it is processed, but it's like pea protein and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, and it's got coconut fat in it, but I mean, it's, it's got... You it's can say it's a hell of a lot better for you than McDonald's, is that? Yeah. You that's can say that's, it's that's not fucking better. hard though, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, 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 even if you had the highest grass-fed cows in the universe and you were making your burgers out of Wagyu, not eating meat, is better than eating meat because, like, it, you know, it is, it, everything that's made into these burgers is a natural ingredient. They're not adding additives. Yeah, yeah. It's just that, but no, they're just, what they're doing is they're, they're like mutating stems from plants <laughs> and stuff, but they're not using, yeah. like, E numbers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I don't know. It's a hard one, really, because yeah. there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that shows that, well, there's a lot of trying to thought that eating meat is like, like animal proteins cause a lot of cancers and stuff. And that's what I've looked into that a bit. And, um, and that's what kind of worried me a bit. And, you know, by going vegan, it kind of reduces your chance of getting a lot of these, these diseases, you know. Yeah, but, see, um, I, on, on that side of things, I guess I, I've done quite a bit of research on that as well. And <clears throat> I think what yeah. a lot of it is, is not necessarily the actual meat that people are eating, it's what they're eating with the meat. So a right. lot of these studies are being done with people like it's generally a generic American diet, which is fucking awful. Right. Like it's fast food. Yeah. It's fried. It's fries. It's no like real vegetables and things like that. And then they're just using, they're just saying that it's the meat that's causing the cancer. But I think it's generally just diet mm. in, in general where Process, I, guess, I suppose processed food. Is- yeah, exactly. Right. And I think it's the one thing we're really lucky in the UK and like it's actually cheap to eat really healthy here. Um, where mm. I'll go to, like when I go to America, my food bill is like three times the amount for like what I would get over here for nothing, barely. Like you can go to the butchers here and get a good, like one of my, a butcher that I went to in Detroit for two sirloin steaks. How much do you think like two sirloin steaks would cost in the UK, like from a butcher? 
Like how much? Good, what? Well, probably eight quid a steak, maybe. Yeah, it cost me fifty dollars for two steaks. What? Really? Yeah, to be fair, actually, that is mad. And uh, we, I think, mm. that, to be honest, I see, I'm a lot of, in, like, yeah. I think we're just so lucky over here where we have like Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer, even like the cheaper, cheaper, like, uh, like big fast or big grocery stores. Like, it's so cheap to eat healthy. You can get vegetables for nothing. You can get good meat for nothing. You can get grass fed meat for nothing. Grass fed thing isn't really like a, a like pushed. Big deal here. It's not a big deal here because yeah. all of our meat is grass, not all of our meat, but a majority of yeah. our meat is grass fed anyway. So it's not really an issue we have. But I don't but know. In I remember when Verity was in America, in Florida, she, you were saying, you, I mean, it's great when you're there for a week, but she was like, you know, look at all this stuff you get, like you get all your cereals. Your lucky Everything's just full of E-numbers. And like and sugar like, and like, yeah. And, everything's just so fattening. And everything, you, you know, you were showing me the breakfast you were having and you get like, you know, you have that bacon and a whole waffles. pack of bacon. But you had, you'd have about 15 rations of bacon yeah. on the breakfast and that was just like standard. Like, do you know what I mean? Crazy. We're super lucky. We're where, very hard. I think I don't there. think people realise how lucky we are to have. Yeah, I think I, I, I think British produce is is the best in the world. I think like, it's, 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 it's amazing. French produce is pretty good though. Yeah, so again, bloody expensive though. Like when we went to France, it's like I remember buying a chicken from the local butchers, in a, and it was I looked at the price per kilo or something, and the thing was about thirty five quid for a chicken. And I was yeah, like, it's wow. Expensive. But, um, but in, you know, it's not exp- You know, you can get good quality local meat and veg and stuff and it's not too expensive what's what's your like biggest seller in the vegan restaurant um it was a, sneaky clucker it was a, it was a burger we've done called the uh the sneaky clucker and it's like oh, a baconator. we make like a big mac sauce it's like our dirty sauce yeah and um it's like a big mac sauce but with a little hint of spice i suppose and uh and it's that with our fried chicken and our kind of seitan you know seitan have you heard of seitan no what's that it's like seitan is like a dough which uses like a chicken well, you can make any kind of um, meat substitute, but vital wheat gluten. So, okay. and then you make like a it's like a flour, and you make a dough out of it, and um, and then you kind of batter that and fry that, and then it's like a chicken burger. But um, and actually, because we do we do beef and chicken, so our beef is Beyond Meat. Yeah, have you had a Beyond Burger? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we use beef, Beyond Meat, and then um, chicken is a Satan. I thought everyone would prefer the Beyond Meat, but actually, people do actually prefer our house made chicken, chicken burger, which is which is good. That's dope. Um, so there we go. So yeah. that's our favorite. That's our kind of most popular, popular thing. That was the burger that we actually introduced at North Street, the Uwe Diner. Yeah. Um, that was what we made there and took it away and everyone went mental. Um, so we were like, right, let's, 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 um, let's do it in, in the new site. That's so, so <laughs> I can't remember if it was this last year or the year before, but didn't you do some like free burger thing on College Green? <laughs> yeah. With, um, yeah, went like mad. Broke with Deliveroo. Yeah, what yeah, happened? So we, did, we, did a, we did a thing with Deliveroo. So it's Deliveroo's fourth birthday. Yeah. Um, and they were working with kind of restaurants they got on with in, uh, in each city. And they did like a 100 burger giveaway or a 100 taco giveaway, whatever. Um, and they'd kind of done it in all the other cities. And it had done all right, but it hadn't obviously blown up. And they messaged us saying, look, do you want to do this? Um, we'll give away 100 burgers. We'll pay for 100 burgers. Uh, we'll create a bit of hype about it. And, um, and we'll do it on College Green in, in City Centre. Yeah. And um, so we were like, yeah. And then, and then anyway, we posted it on our social media and then it got loads of traction. Uh, and then we and then the Bristol Post kind of posted about it. And then everyone was started tagging their mates <laughs> and thousands of people were getting involved. We were messaging delivery like, we really, really need more than 100 burgers. I think it's going to be really busy. Um, and anyway, they were like, 200? And we're like, honestly, I think we're going to need more. So I think we did about three or 400 in the end. Um, between split between Uri Vegan and Uri Diner. Yeah. So we're making these burgers, brought them down, and suddenly, 12, it was at one o'clock, the giveaway, about 12 o'clock, kind of a gathering of people start gathering. Verity was down there. I was cooking the food in one of the sides. And then it kind of gets to 12.30. There's probably about six, 700 people there waiting Jeez. for one o'clock. And Verity's ringing me like, you've got to hurry up. You've got to come. <laughs> um, there's too many people. We just need to get these burgers. Gets to one o'clock, there's about between like maybe fifteen hundred people there, it was ridiculous. It was a video online of it um, no that a friend way. of ours did, and it was, it was absurd. It was like a festival. Type in like um, I'm googling it now. Uwe 
Diner Burger Giveaway. So yeah, if you type and then and then if you go on the um the news flare one, thousands of people swarm at Uwe Diner's free burger event. Oh yeah. Did you see that? Is, so that's what it's called. Thousands of, thousands of people. Yeah, so it's on the news flare website. So and then you can see all of the people there. People were literally fighting for it and then um you That's got it. crazy. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it now. So anyway, so then it was, it was like a festival. So the police all came down, like the riot squad or whatever, and uh, thinking it was, I think it was, they thought it was a protest to do with climate change or something. And then <laughs> um, so anyway, they, they all rolled down and, um, and it ended up basically telling us to go home. And then I turned up with another hundred burgers. So then we had this line of police uh, holding the crowd back because Live Rue didn't actually send any like security. It was really poorly organized, to be fair. Um, and they didn't send any security or anything like that. So it was literally like two of their marketing girls who were quite a small kind of 25 year old <laughs> girls and, uh, like that. And, and they were literally, as soon as they got the burgers out, people were like wrestling them for the burgers. Like there was no order there. And anyway, so the police came, they sorted it out. And then there was this picture of like the police were holding, holding this crowd of people back. Well, the police, myself and the police were just handing out these burgers. It was so funny. That's so good. And, um, but yeah, and then, and then everyone, it went mental. Um, and then all these like news people, like ringing us, like what's going on? And it was like I think we got on the ITV, the Mirror. Were you on the Sun? The sun yeah, like, you were on the Sun. I remember the Sun kind of popping up. No, the Mirror. It was Daily Mail in the Mirror. It was, daily, it was some of these ones. Yeah, it was. It was, and uh, it was. Yeah, it was quite funny. But um, we've never done anything like it. To be honest. And then, like, all these people were ringing us up, like, "Hi, yeah, can you can you give us a press release?" I was like, "What's the press release?" Yeah. <laughs> and then I was, I was like, "I'd never done anything." I was like, "What is the press release?" They were like, "Oh, well, you need to tell us like what happened." Blah, blah, blah. Like, all right, cool. That's but, yeah, really it was good. great. It's it's good PR, I guess. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it was really good. Did, did 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 the restaurants get busier after that? Uh, I rang. Yeah, it was pretty busy. Um, I can't remember if it was actually busy, but it was. There was everyone was talking about it. Yeah, you know, like like it loads of people. It was like, just an accidental press. It was. It wasn't meant to get. It yeah, was it wasn't meant to be like that. It was meant to be like you know handing out. I thought it'd be busy, but we didn't think it'd be anything like that. That's kind of the best yeah. situation, though, isn't it? When you don't plan mm. something and it kind of just goes a little bit crazy. We don't really plan anything. <laughs> I think yeah, we the general that. theme. <laughs> yeah, the general theme of what we do is we just roll with we things wing and it. Then wing it and see, see what happens. No, we have got to that stage in our life about a year ago, though, when as soon as we opened Jimmy Vegan and you go from two to three, like winging it doesn't really no. work anymore. So this is now I've gone from winging it to writing such in like such in detailed OCD plans that. I annoy myself when I read back through them. I set little alarms on my phone, like, do this. Yeah, no, no, it is pretty time. OCD. Everything, everything, it started out like a bit, a bit chaotic. And now it's like we've learned from that. Now everything is, is just But actually, not having to do anything for the next month is pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine it's quite because because yeah. living like one of I've got a good friend who is actually the, Gregory Gordet. He's like he was the first guy on the podcast. Um, He's like a on celebrity top chef in America. He kind of runs quite a big restaurant in in Portland, um, and he wow. went, he was kind of telling me the like the lifestyle of a chef and the lifestyle of running a restaurant and things like. That. And it's pretty fucking nonstop. It's like pretty much worse than a DJ yeah. life. Yeah. And it's we work hard enough as well, and I, like twelve hours a day, seven days a week is pretty rough. So although the Corona times isn't good for you for business. It must be quite nice to like actually chill. And does it, have you found it like give you any more time, yeah. like any more like inspiration on like planning on what to do in the future and things like that? I think I'm just kind of using this time to um, sleep and eat. Well, we're actually, we're trying to, we've oh, been yeah. researching it. So what I, I've wanted for ages to um, do some stuff on YouTube. Like, I love YouTube. Like, yeah. I, I don't even really watch TV like now. I like I never watch TV at all. Really. I just all I watch is YouTube. Yeah, and um, I've become quite obsessed with it. And uh, so I really want to have a go at trying to make some cooking videos and um, and get get some stuff uploaded and learn to video edit. So I've been trying to do, like this last night. I was watching some tutorials and stuff. Um, and I'm going to try and use this time because I think we're probably going to be locked down for another month or two or three, yeah, maybe. Definitely. Um, so I'm going to try and use the time to actually learn how to create videos. And then plan some cooking videos and, and try and get some stuff up. Um, just something I've been banging on about for about a year or two, maybe about probably about a year and a half. 
say, I really want to do it, I really want to do it, but you never actually find the time. And like, and what we're saying like now is actually the perfect time to do all these things that you wanted to do for ages. Do you know what I mean? No, I totally agree. And um, I guess everyone wants to be at home now and learn how to cook food because no one really cooks food nowadays. I think everyone's right. cooking Insta. Yeah, exactly. Have you noticed there's a bit of a phase for cooking banana bread now? Everyone's cooking banana bread I saw that the other day. I don't even fucking like bananas. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Every yeah. single person is cooking banana yeah, we bread. About 12. It's, it's weird, Why? But... Is it just because someone... I don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't like banana bread. So you get a challenge just... or something? I don't know. It must be. I'm, I've actually just... I don't know if I've ever even I don't, I don't know. It's... I feel like it must be the banana bread challenge or something. There's so many challenges going on. I just did a challenge uh, yesterday. I'm about to post it now. Um, it's called a bottle bottle sample challenge. So you get your water bottle and you record. Bottle sample. Yeah, so I, so I get a water bottle and then record <coughs> as many sounds as I possibly can from a water bottle and then make a record out of <laughs> the sounds of the water bottle. And it's just like, there's so many crazy, so many crazy shits coming from everyone just having so much time on their hands. It's, it's insane. It could be a good thing though, you know, people, people, I take totally a agree. Step, saying, anyway, it's like, people are taking a step back from this fast, like routine of life that yeah. you don't get a second to do anything you want to do. And actually now everyone's got time to actually think about stuff and, and come up with, I bet loads of new ideas will come from it, you know? Totally. Um, the, um, I will not be doing the press-up challenge. Um, <laughs> it's only 10. I will not be come doing on. the downing of pipe. 10 press-ups. You can do this, Verity. I'll be making, the, I'll be participating in making the banana bread challenge <laughs> more likely than I would be doing the press-up. So I'm just on your website at the moment. What's the Dyna Club? Press-up challenge Oh. What, sorry? Did you hear that? So I'm just on your website now, and uh, what's the Diner Club about? Uh, so the Diner Club is something we're trying to build because with with our restaurants now, we're trying to build more than just a restaurant. Like yeah. we're trying to create like a whole culture about about what we do. Yeah, you know, like, as as you kind of said in Bristol, it's it's more than um, just the burgers and stuff. Like. You know, we, we work with loads of DJs. We have cool parties and stuff. At our Christmas party, we always have loads of DJs and stuff play. Um, and it's about, like, music, the kind of people that we... I don't know. It's, 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 it's more than just the restaurants. And it's, like... like and what we're trying to do with the Diner Club is build, get everybody who likes our brand and likes our food and likes what we do to sign up to this thing. And um, we haven't been utilising it as best possible at the moment, but we're in the process of building it. So it's basically like a newsletter as such. But... We want to kind of create, um, you know, people who are part of the diner club get the discounts and they get like, you know, secret menu items uh, that only the diner club get. We want to have like, um, eventually, like I want to get like when we're in London, I definitely want to start doing some some like smallish parties um, and like you know have a, have a few parties and just have fun with that. Yeah. Um, and maybe like put the tickets out to the diner club members and I don't know, just just it's just kind of like a place to kind of collect all of your. Um, the people who like your stuff and then it's we're talking to them and like really like adding value to to them so they feel like they're part of it yeah part yeah, of the sure. kind of journey you know no i like that i like that a lot can yeah. you can you do a t-shirt uh with i know you do a t-shirt online but can you do a t-shirt with like all your little uh like illustrations <laughs> yeah, if we needed to do that, actually, we did one putting all the bird. What a t-shirt with the, the burger man and yeah, the burger man burger. and the shake man yeah. and all of that. I think it, and like the diner club. Yeah, we could do that, you could, you could do. We did do it. Here we go. Oh yes, yeah, show, show him. What's here? Why am I covered? Bit creased, but so we did this one. So got the that's the back. The... That's dope. It's a burger guy, and then the front. And it's just got that on the front with a little shake man. So that was what we did. I think we only made a hundred of them, and then they all um, sold out. Slash, we wore half them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we always do that with merch. I always get loads of merch and end up wearing it all. Yeah, and then no one making no money of it. Cool guys. <laughs> yeah. Or right. like our mates come around and they're like, oh, I really like that. That's the worst yeah, about merch. Yeah, every, yeah. every single one of your mates wants a t-shirt or wants a jacket or wants a hat, and it's like, come on, guys. Like, I'm just giving you money now. I might as well just give you 20 quid. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I remember when we first started, like, 
Um, our main inspirations were like Supreme and um, and In and Out Burger, and we're like, our oh, kind of where we sat, we're like, right, uh, the kind of where we're looking to be is like between In and Out and Supreme, and like kind of follow that kind of suit. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so I was obsessed with making the box logo hoodies, but with the same as the Supreme, because you know the Supreme box logo hoodies are like really tight weave. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah badge on the on the thing and, and that and it turns out that's really expensive to do on a small, <laughs> small print so i ended up making this batch of hoodies where i think it was costing about 15 quid to just get a, it, it ended up costing me about 40 quid cost price to make these plain box logo hoodies and um and actually to be fair all of our mates bought them when we first started and they all i think they were i think i was selling them for cost price uh which is still quite a lot 40 quid for a for a hoodie but um that's what i love the though and I, but, I think yeah to be fair, I think that's and all a, our mates did support, and they were bought them. I think that's the thing for about Bristol, though. Like, there's so much community in Bristol, and I, I don't know, hundred percent. I don't know if you like, get, ever, get that. That's in. the reason why Uwe did well. Is because go on. I was gonna say the reason why Uwe did well. I think is because when we first started, like all of our mates were like so supportive of it, and like in Bristol, everyone was like, "Oh, my mate's doing this!" Like, "Oh, you check it out, you check it out," and then everyone's sharing it, and like. And that like network of, you know, we had a launch party where we invited loads of mates down, got really pissed, cooked loads of burgers and like everyone loved it. And then everyone was telling their mates about it. Do you remember? And, and, and that is, we always say that's a big part of how it is the success of it is that all of our mates told all their mates about it and then their mates went and had it and then they loved it yeah. and told all their mates about it. And it's like that network of that launch. Yeah. It's like when you run a, you, you know, when you run your first party yeah, yeah, and like, you have to like, your first party always does really well because all your mates want to support and they come down and then... Um, so then they all just want gas. Then, they, then the first one, they all support, they come down, then you've got to make that event a banger and then the people who actually want to come and pay for it. Yeah, yeah. So your first one is like your grace period of like all your mates are going to come, you know? Whereas it was saying like that with us, like we had this launch party, invited all our mates down, but then, and thanks to our mates, they've always just supported it, share everything, like everything on Facebook, tag all their mates, get them all to go bought all the merch. Do you know what I mean? Like they, we did have like, a really supportive group yeah. of mates that really kind of helped launch it. That's amazing though. That's that's kind of how how yeah. a business is built. And I think what yeah. you guys are doing is amazing. Like I've been following it since you started and I just keep it up. And if there's anything I can do or anything any of us can do, just reach out. I'm happy to support as much as I can. Uh, right, oh, so I'm excited. We have to come and eat one first. I know I have to come and eat one and we should definitely throw a party in one of them. We should definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. I think social distancing might be putting a well, stop got, um, to that currently. True. We've got so what we're actually doing going forward is we've got void sound systems in all of them. Sick. So um, you can come and um, so yeah, got, come and do a live set from Uri during lockdown. Yeah, we, we've got we've got a void we've got the void system in uh, in North Street in Bristol, which sounds amazing. And then um, in Dalston, we've got it over two floors with like Lan and Heath mixer and like. The, two, the subs, it's all basically, it's all being coloured to our uh, Pantone as well. So it's yeah, like the ooey yeah. green no thing. Way. And then like, the, and it's got the subs on the wall at head height as well. So it's going to look pretty, um, it's quite built around this void. And hopefully as we go, as we grow bigger, I want to work with Void and like, you know, run some pretty cool parties and stuff. Um, and have them kind of support the, the sound system side of it. And be, you know, I, I want all the restaurants having the same sound system. No, I think um, that's amazing. We should, we should definitely yeah. do like a, organize like a, a boiler room or something Ooh, like that. Hello? Lost you. Can you? Hey. We lost Yo, you. Back on. Can yeah. You? What yeah. were you saying? We should, yeah. we should organize like a, like a boiler room or something like that. We can, uh, we can, yeah. we can definitely put all of yeah. our, all of our heads together and get that going. You should do a boiler room at the new Uwe Vegan in Dalton when it opens. Yeah, that one's going to be, um, that one I want to gear up to, uh, to to do that kind of stuff. Like I went to, have you heard of Brilliant Corners? Yeah. In, um, there's a place called Brilliant Corners in um, Dalston, and it's like an audio file bar, so they've got this insane sound system in there, and it's like a restaurant, and then I, I went for the first time um, a couple of weekends ago, and uh and yeah, so it's like a restaurant, and then after dinner, it kind of turns into a bit of a party. But and then it, and then it goes on to like two a.m. So kind of took inspiration from that a little bit, and it'd be cool to to have this 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 fast food style thing. And at about what I was thinking on weekends is to turn from about nine o'clock, have a DJ playing, but not thumping it out as yeah, such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it gets to because we've got a license till two or three a.m. Oh, really? Um, so so basically, yeah, have the DJ, and then when food stops at ten o'clock. Um, and then the DJ can thump it out for the last few hours and it can turn into a bit of a party. Can you sell booze as well? 
we can got we've got booze license. Yeah, the booze license is until three a.m. So that's sick. That, that's really good. Um, so we need to take advantage of that. Mate, you should see the restaurant. The downstairs is sick. It's got like a like a slightly darker booty room. Yeah, so we've got it's two the Dolston one. It's got like a ground floor and a big basement as well. Um, and the sound systems are like linked where you can split them. Or so yeah, it's a really cool setup. And like I say, we got got like voids, literally void speakers all around the sides, and then the subs all at head level. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everywhere you are, there's these like these these speakers. They look really cool. They're gonna well, you Thumbs down well, when qu- when quarantine's over, let's uh, yeah. let's plan yeah. something. I'm definitely let's done do for that. Yeah. Right, uh, guys, so let's what? let's uh, let's wrap this one up, um, yeah. and let's get you on again when the Dalston uh, restaurants yeah. open, so we can kind of push it a little what? bit. That'd be amazing. What, so what is the, so? What are the? Can you tell me about the podcast? What are they? Yeah, so this is just a podcast that I so I used to run a radio show called the Barbershop. And it was just yeah. like a mix and me talking shit um, and it would kind of, people would listen to it. But I just got bored of doing mixes. I don't listen to mixes and it just bored me. So I just wanted to like get people on that. I'm, I don't just do music. Like I'm super into a lot of other things and I kind of wanted to get people that I'm into and people that I like I'm mates with or people that I know are doing like yeah. dope shit. And I kind of wanted to just be able to sit down and have a conversation with people that, like we would never have done this if I didn't have a podcast. No. <laughs> like this would never have happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like a lot of times, you don't often get to speak to somebody for an hour about shit. It's like even your mates, yeah. you don't really get to sit cool. down for an hour and just talk That's about it. stuff. I love podcasts. Yeah, same. yeah, we love podcasts. I've recently discovered them. I never really used to think I'd like them, but then I've recently started listening to a few, and um, it's really interesting. There's one I, I'd say you should listen to is that. Um, you know, guy. Have you ever listened to that guy Raz? How I built this? Yes, it's well good. Have you listened to the Five Guys one? No, I haven't. I haven't. The one with the owner of Five Guys. It's, it, well, I loved it, obviously. But um, check it out. It's really good. That yeah, like, and then all, and then from that, I've listened to all of them. It was one with like Starbucks. How they've done it. It's like okay, so interesting. Have you? Um, do, you do you do you know David Chang, the chef? Yeah, yeah. he's got a he's got a podcast. Um, Is that's, it? That's really good. Um, yeah, you should check that one out for sure. That program last night. Oh yeah, David Chang, a legend. Yeah, the ugly, delicious. We were watching that program, Chef. Yeah, have you seen Chef? Yeah, it's really good. Um, you know the film, so yeah, he's got like yeah. a program now with. So he's on that, isn't he? What's his name? John Ferraru. John Ferraru. Fer- can't remember his name. Are he's you cool basically going to get them all together then and release them all at once? Kind no, of. No, so I'm probably going to start releasing them next week. I'm doing another one. I think you're my third one. Um, yeah. so I just wanted to get like three or four in the bag so that I can kind of yeah. just like keep up on it all. Um, but I'm probably going to release like one, yeah, or, one or two a week. Um, yeah, now's the time to smash them out. Well, surely now there's really, loads yeah. of people wanting to do it. Yeah. Like, you don't do two it? a week really. That's good, good coverage. Yeah. It's, it's pretty easy as well. It's like, I'd, I'd much rather do it in person, much rather. Yeah. Um, but obviously we can't at the moment. So I quite like it. I think it's cool. Yeah. Quarantine podcast. Yeah. Like, it's cooler having it over FaceTime. I feel way more relaxed. Like when I've done them before and there's like a freak in front of my face, it's just that like I have to think about what I'm saying whereas it's just like a conversation <laughs> between mates. Do you know what yeah, I mean? No, and I think that's the whole point of it is like I, I want people, I want people that know me like as what I do to like actually know other parts of my life and what other things I'm interested in. And also by doing that is bringing other people to it. And obviously like if you tell some of your mates about it, that probably never even heard of me, if you know what I mean. And like everybody, mm. I think it's just about again, it's what you guys have done with Uwe is like creating a community that like everyone's into it and everyone can just jump on and just in learn shit. Well, that's and- the thing. It's like minded people. We're all like minded people, really into this. Like all my mates are into the same thing: food, music, going exactly. out, having. You know what I mean, like yeah, that's it. Are you just going to release them on your Instagram and set up a podcast page? No, it will, it will all be through iTunes and Spotify. Um, and I'll probably add it on. So so the plan when we're in, in person is to like film it as well so it can go on YouTube. So I think I'm still going to upload these onto YouTube, but it will just have um, it will just have the the artwork of the show and then take it from there. Oh, I've lost you. Hello. Yo, lost you again. I right. can hear us now. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. 
let's wrap this one up because my internet yeah. is playing up. So, guys, thank you so much for being on. It's been amazing. Good luck with everything. Um, uh, nice to meet. Catch you very soon. All right. Safe. Yeah. Safe, guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye. So that is podcast number three, done and dusted. Big ups to everybody that's listened. Big up to Charlie and Verity for that one. I really enjoyed it. It was good fun. Excuse me about the uh, technical issues. We, I'm having major internet issues living in the farm right now. However, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for listening. If you did listen and you enjoyed the podcast, please uh, share it to your mates, your mum, your gran, whoever. I'm pretty sure... Uh, people might enjoy it. So yeah. And if you fancy, give me some, give me some ratings on, uh, in, on Instagram, not on Instagram, on, uh, what's it called? iTunes and Spotify. Big love. See you very soon.